Brutal Legend, a game where I'm Jack sure Black we're... takes you to his favorite record store and shows you a secret record so powerful and mystical, it whisks us away to the metal life of Eddie Riggs, the world's greatest roadie, who immediately dies to his own handiwork. Haha, <laughs> but don't fret, the metal god Orma Godin smiles upon him and whisks him away to the metal afterlife. It's here that a gang of dodgy cultists decide to shank him up, but a conveniently placed axe and a newfound attitude that murder is acceptable solves this problem. Couple that with a guitar so powerful it shoots lightning and you've got yourself some fun third person beat em up combat. It's then... I'm supposed to think you're a nun but I know you're really some kind of big ugly demon so let's have it. Aha! I knew it! Big ugly demon. So you steal the demon lady's whip and find out... Oh man. Don't tell me I've been slaying hot girls this whole time. Eddie and his new friend, Ophelia, realize they're being descended upon by like a thousand dudes. Yeah, that's a lot of dudes. So of course, Eddie and most likely you, my lovely viewer, have the same idea. He should build a hot rod and commit small scale genocide because this is a driving game. This is where Jack stops voice acting and just starts saying what the player's thinking. Oh, come on. Fucking sick of you guys. Before everything starts breaking and you ride through the chaos because of your undeveloped prisoner brain, you fall off the map twice. You then get a cutscene that plays at 20% of the game's volume, introducing Emperor Deviculus, the main villain. Spooky. Ophelia takes you to meet Lars, the leader of the resistance, and full time Chad. He speaks of a prophecy that Ormagon will bring a hero to save or destroy the world. And some dick named Lion White has enslaved all the men to toil in the mine and women to work in the pleasure tower. Then the game opens up because this is a free roaming third person action adventure driving game. Jackie Riggs then plays some sweet tunes to win over the metalheads. This teaches you about the squad unit control? You order them to attack, defend, move to or follow, and they follow you back to Bladehenge. But on your way, you can stop at the upgrade station because this is a third person action adventure role playing driving game about music. Yes. And did I mention Ozzy Osbourne sells you the upgrades? There are cosmetic options for Eddie, your weapons and car. Some have bonuses like chain lightning for the axe or tuning up the speed and armor for your wheels. There was even DLC that added extras. This is where the game really opens up on this half of the map. I'll come back to that later. You can now explore the beautifully crafted rock fantasy world. Following the story adds new characters to the rebellion like Ophelia's rangers and the Killmaster's healers. How is she? Fading. We need to take her to the Killmaster. The what? Do not fear him. He chooses that name to scare off intruders and protect his flock of giant spiders. Or you can check out some side missions like races, ambushes, or mortar duty. Then there's a hundred odd collectibles and all of these give you currency to spend with Ozzy. As you progress through the early game, it's established through cutscenes and extra dialogue if you find the characters in the world that Lita hates and distrusts Ophelia because of her family's past with the Blackwater. Ophelia and Blackie Riggs fail social distancing, and Lars becomes more of a Giga Chad. With the aid of a new character who uh, appears out of nowhere, Mangus, Eddie comes up with a plan to stop the incoming Lion White attack by building a stage, which sets off a chain reaction of summoning spirits from the earth. Jack's response to this is to build a merchandise booth. Quick, Mangus, we need to build a merch booth. Fans are gonna want t-shirts, posters, maybe hats. To sell t-shirts to the ghosts. Maybe then they'll stop scaring us in phasmophobia. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, no. Oh, it's behind us, it's behind us. I'm not even fucking kidding, boys. But don't run off on me, boy, <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> Turns out that building a merch booth on the fans gives you money to build units. Because this is an RTS. A third person action adventure romantic role playing RTS. Driving game about music. Lion White shows up with his hair clipping and he's all like, Oink, get this rebellion out bro. And Lars is all like, And the battle ensues and you die instantly. 
because you put it on brutal difficulty and Lion White's invincible. And then his units do their best Randy Orton impression. But deal with Lion White spawn camping long enough and he literally flies away having a tantrum. Did I mention that he can fly? Eddie Black builds a tour bus and mandatory driving section ensues to take the fight to Lion White. And now Eddie has demon wings. I hope my parents were wrong about this. Ooh, Ophelia knows something. Keeping secrets. <laughs> the wings allow you to fly around in the RTS battles, making it easier to control your units. I say easier lightly. You battle through to Lion White's keep, gaining punchy dudes, roadies, and ballista car units before the epic battle. Lion White rolls up before the fight to Yippa Yappa about how he's actually saving humanity by making a deal with the demons. But Lars is all like, Today we shall hear it again. The music of a free people. From the singing of our blades through your flesh, to the pounding of our fists into your skull. For the honor of Bladehenge, for the freedom of its people, and for the glory of its metal! There's some solid voice work here. Obviously Jack's going to crush it. He's essentially playing himself, but the rest of the cast match it, especially Lars and Deviculus. The animations get a little scuffed and don't sync up, but the acting itself is quality. You and Lion White go head to head in this uphill stage battle. His units trickle down from two raised platforms, which allow you to spawn camp them if they don't get stuck. Speaking of getting stuck, I reached the point of destroying Lion White stage and none of my units would attack. And if I took control of them, they did no damage. Better play this half an hour battle again. At least I can clip my camera through the map and look at Lion White's sex dolls. Guess that's something. Lion White goes Kasplat, but he wasn't the true enemy of humanity. That's this guy, Emperor Deviculus, who is also voiced by Nigel Thornberry, so I will refer to him as such. Nigel starts spouting some nonsense about someone named Sakuria. He talks of her mission to spy on humanity, not to join them. And he knows it was her at the Temple of Armageddon. Ooh, there was one male and one female there. We know Ophelia is keeping secrets. But Lars is all like, it's bad, but, fuck up. Not to fuck up you. but remember when I talked about romance between Eddie and Ophelia? Instead of just teasing romance, like a lot of games, they follow through. Or at the start, where Jackie Riggs says what the player's thinking. The game has these really grounded moments. So what would happen if the last two leaders of the world met with no guards or army behind them? Nigel Thornberry literally impales him on the spot. The king is dead and Nigel has called in his ODSTs. If only there was a song of perseverance, a representation of challenge that all gamers knew and could rally behind. At least I can clip my camera through the map and look at Lion White's sex dolls. Guess that's something. Eddie, Lita, and Ophelia escape. Lita tries to team kill Ophelia, but Eddie Black stops her. And this is where the game and the story get a bit funky, if the gameplay wasn't funky already. Major spoiler warning. All signs point towards Ophelia being Sakuria, but she's not, and she can't tell Eddie who Sakuria is. Turns out Sakuria was the previous leader of the demons. The demons won a previous war with humanity and enslaved it. <sighs> 
After an orgy that lasts 10 years, they send Sakuria forward in time to find the secrets of the Titans that the humans know, despite they just wiped out the majority of them and enslaved the rest. So if they went to the future, there'd be a decreased amount of humans, so I don't know how that's going to increase the chance of them finding the knowledge that only humans know, but yet orgy time travel seems like the logical answer. Sakuria also takes some slaves with her into the future. Turns out Eddie Riggs' dad is one of them. I don't know how he snuck away from orgy duty, but power to him. Upon reaching modern day, she is so shocked that humanity rules the world, she gives up on life. Eddie's dad, who is there to kill her, pities the wallowing soldier, hero of the demons, and someone who participated in the almost genocide of his people. But he's like, fuck that noise, and starts to take care of her. Then falls in love with her and has a child, Eddie. Sakuria dies at childbirth, and this is why Eddie has demon wings in the RTS mode. But we hop, skip back to the present. Wait, wouldn't this be the past? We hop, skip back to the past. And Ophelia is being accused of being Sakuria. She says it's not her. And rightfully Eddie questions this, asking who Sakuria is. But Ophelia won't say because she's trying to protect Eddie. But this is just a force plot point to divide Eddie and Ophelia. Her not saying who Sakuria is doesn't make sense. Explaining she was the ruler of demons doesn't reveal to Eddie that she's his mum. It's just a fact of this world. Or a fact of the past? If this is history, why doesn't Eddie know any of this? But back to Ophelia. If she just said Sakuria was the queen of demons, that would hard clear her from being voted off the ship. He's 100% human. We know this because everyone, bar Lars, hates her two human parents. Oh, and uh, Lars is fully dead, skip three months later. What the fuck? <laughs> This is a game of rock and roll, a beautifully crafted world of unsung heroes, comedy, love, and decapitation. The one thing it doesn't need is <laughs> the one. <laughs> the one thing it doesn't need. <laughs> the one thing it doesn't need is fucking <laughs> time travel. <laughs> Maybe it needs more horror elements. I mean, that wasn't on the list of of all the things that are going on in this game. Maybe, maybe horror has some sort of place. When do we get to the city building? That's what I want to know. The time travel left such a bad taste in my mouth. It redcons what some of the characters say, but the plot moves forward anyway. Oh, and does it move? Remember when I mentioned the first half? Well, throughout that portion of the game, you are guided from one main story mission to another, with collectibles and side missions littered between. But in the later portion of the game, the missions are just driving, speeding through the map. The demons retake Bladehenge and the first part of the map gets reskinned and gimpified, but you just drive through it and it's not used. This could have been a cool plot point to retake the homeland, led by Lita who would have a chance to become the new leader of the resistance, to replace her brother, which she's praised for at the end of the game. But shut the fuck up kid, driving section, riding section. Characters figuring out time travel despite it never getting discussed. Ophelia is now evil because of one argument. Oh, did I mention driving sections? Jackie Riggs Eddie Black sees some random bit of scrap and goes, oh, I should make a super weapon. You now have access to a super weapon. Did I mention driving sections? I don't think we've had any of those. And now we're at the end of the game. The last section of the map almost gets skipped as he blazed through it. The end of the game is a multi-set stage battle, first with Ophelia. It's pretty easy, even on brutal difficulty, because you have access to a super weapon. You confront Ophelia and Thornberry shows up to talk more about Sakuria, and this confuses Ophelia? Despite this being the catalyst that turned her evil. What? Then Nigel pulls her heart out and eats it. That's pretty metal. Captain Smashing summons a super monster, and you have to build an army to take it down, then drive through its head to finish it off. This was hard on Brutal. I lost the first time, because I didn't build the super weapon. Finally, you end up in the head with Nigel. This goes back to the third person combat that only select enemies were made for. The rest were made with the RTS mode in mind, but the third person combat works better. In fact, development steered away from the RTS once the action combat got more work, because it fit a lot better. But this meant no version of the combat got 100% love from the team. And you can tell, the RTS elements are clunky and made for consoles so it's limited in scope. Thankfully, flying and pushing up on the D-pad isn't the final move. You battle Emperor Thornberry. 
you cut his head off and pull his heart out. I oh, the wrong one. And Eddie jumps into the black water to find Ophelia. Ah, oh, plot twist. It doesn't send people mad. Something that's stressed in the law. It makes an evil version of them. So there should be thousands and thousands of people down here, right? No, it's, it's just Ophelia on this like half 3D, half 2D texture. What the fuck is happening? You save Ophelia and return home to Bladehenge, which the demons don't occupy anymore despite them still fighting you in the open world. You can still drive around for collectibles, side missions, and to make out with Ophelia, or have a beer with the boys. But that's the end. This game feels like an acid trip. There's nothing like it. Which might be a good thing. The art's unreal though. The gameplay and story, there's just too much going on. When your catalyst for time travel is a 10 year orgy, you've gone too far down the overcomplicated rabbit hole. And we haven't even talked about multiplayer. You can try the Drowned and Tainted Coil factions here. If you get Ophelia's ultimate unit, Big Tree Guy, you insta win. Or just rush with the Tainted Coil. You can spawn units on the fly with these guys, so even on Brutal, it's a steamroll. It also looks like 8 players should be able to play, but it's just 1v's. Tim Schafer, the vision behind this, has showed interest in doing a second Brutal Legend. But I'd love to see a remake or reimagining of this one. Double down on the RTS or the third person action, but don't half ass both. Take out the time travel and just have this as an alternate world or Eddie's afterlife. Then don't rush the player at the end. I beat this in 5 hours on the hardest difficulty, but it should take 10, 15. Flush out the last areas and the retake of Bladehenge. And what about Lion White talking about he was actually saving humanity? That's just a one-off line. What if there was more to that? What if there was some sort of choice to have him join the army or execute him? And your decisions affected different characters in different ways. I don't know if that's better than time travel orgies, but but that's my take on it. Would I recommend it? The game, not the, not the time travel orgy. If it was on sale on GOG or Steam, but not by itself. I do like this game, don't get me wrong. Especially the art. But it's fucking weird. Moving my content to more thought out videos and reviews, I had to do Brutal Legend. Get it out of my system. There's just so much to talk about with this game. And looking at all the extra lore, I thought I was going crazy. But that's the end of the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you thought down below, especially if you've played it. If you enjoyed this, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the like button. It helps your boy out with that algorithm nonsense. If you want to see any of this live, head over to Twitch. Link in the description. A big thanks to the guys who support me over there. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye. 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 B